Hello, I'm Dr. Ramsey Amin, Burbank Dental Implants in Burbank, California, and I'd like to clarify a little bit about different kinds of full arch bridges, okay? There's a lot of confusion for when we replace all teeth, whether we have a bridge like this that has just implants, or whether we have a bridge like this that has te uh, teeth, gums, bone, right, connected to the implant. So let's go through the differences between the two. So in our mind, everybody would like to have a bridge like this, right? It's smooth, it's sleek. We refer to this as crown and bridge or FP1. FP1 is the term for it. The other extreme is called FP3, right? This has teeth, gums, and replaces bone as well. So let's kind of talk about the pros and cons. Uh, we'll, we'll focus mostly on, on this because what we see out there is a lot of this. And a lot of my cases are like this for a very good reason. So this is FP1 restoration. You can see this particular bridge is supported by eight dental implants, right? And it has no pink. These patients that have the ability to have this done usually have a lot more bone to work with. That's number one. They haven't lost gum or lip support. They haven't had any gum disease to lose bone around their teeth. So there's adequate bone to place these implants into sockets without leveling the bone down or replacing any of the sort of, sort of facial lip support. You'll find a lot of articles I've written on facial lip support. These types of bridges, the big downside are they're, they're more costly, okay? They're, they're definitely harder to do. They require a lot more skill of the dentist provider to do this rather than to do this. These are both difficult to do, right? But one is a bit easier. So these are also, besides more challenging to do and requires a lot more skill in a much better lab, it requires numerous visits, more temporaries and prototypes. Your existing teeth pretty much have to be in a good place to where the new teeth are going to be. If you have a very challenging bite or the teeth are in the wrong locations, this often doesn't work. These are much weaker than the other types of bridges that have pink, the FP3, because they're not as sturdy, right? They're just much thinner in general. So they're breakable. The ways that we prevent breakage on these or reduce breakage is to uh, design them to have their connectors as thick as possible on the inside like the gum portion to segment them instead of making them a round horseshoe then we try to make them into smaller pieces so if a piece breaks then you can replace that piece a little bit easier so that's not always the easy thing to do uh, to replace a broken piece so in these types of bridges, the other long-term issue that can happen is the, the, the implants can lose bone easier on this type of bridge than it can on this type of bridge. This is because these implants are put in a more shallow position where the teeth used to be, where the gums and bone are more delicate. Some ways to reduce the chance of losing bone and gum are to have what's called socket shield or root banking, very fancy procedures in order to prevent the bone from being lost in just three to seven years. So even though it looks great today, it may be terrible in a few years and completely redoing it to go to this phase. So what I'm trying to say is very limited, very few people fall into the ability to be able to do this. Very few patients are good candidates for it. There's a lot of dentists who believe everybody can have this, and that's very poor foresight. Maybe not a lot of experience, haven't seen cases over time, haven't dealt with the problems and breakages and total implant loss that can happen on the FP1 bridge. So they are definitely more delicate. The, 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 the thicker bridges, you know, these are great for lip support, cleansability. This is much harder to clean. This is easier to clean. There's less implants. This is less costly in general, unless we're having to do zygomatic implants or pterygoid implants or something.
very special. But these are very cleansable because the surface is round. You can water pick in them very easily as opposed to tooth by tooth. You have to go through here and replace this. This particular bridge has pterygoids on it. Uh, those are special implants put into the back to help give adequate support. So big advantage are lip support, able to correct bites, midlines, uh, facial support, everything. The, the, you have basically a clean slate to work with. And that's where these bridges really shine. Also, the implants are placed much deeper on the FP3 than they are on the FP1. And the deep replacement is in better bone that doesn't tend to melt away. So I do find among some of my colleagues that I respect that some of them just don't do this altogether because it's more time consuming, it's much more costly, requires many more visits uh, because it's hard to do. But doesn't mean that everybody should end up with this. There are certain candidates that should end up this way. And it's not always age dependent. Another huge factor has got to do with how much gums you show. So when you smile, if you show a lot of gum like this, then it's far better to have this type of restoration than it is to have this because you don't want to see this pink transition zone. We don't want to see that visible in the smile. That always needs to get hidden. This is, these are very beautiful. If somebody was smiling at you, you would not tell nature from, from not especially, sorry about that, if they're well done, uh, well done bridges. So these are a lot of factors uh, in the choices. It really comes down to, honestly, diagnosis, treatment planning, uh, experience in really nailing down what is the right treatment for this patient. Uh, so many people online want to say, oh yes, everybody should just have this type of bridge. This is the way that it should be done. And I tell you from 25 years of experience, this is not the case. I have done literally thousands of these and thousands of these and they are to be done very, very carefully. And each patient we choose very carefully what's going to be best for longevity. I've mentioned before on numerous blog posts, dental implants are not permanent. They will not last a lifetime. They can be, they are certainly the best way to replace your teeth if you have to remove all of them or just one of them, uh, but they do have some problems. And so honestly, uh, honestly, what I'm saying is a proper diagnosis, a treatment plan, and then having the team, the doctor, the lab that can execute that and build in case, you know, build the case in the lab strong enough to last. That is going to be what's going to give longevity and a happy patient versus one of the many, many redos that I do, honestly, on a weekly basis. I have another one coming up on, on Thursday. So these are just some insights into the FP1 bridge that has no pink. Okay, that's the uh, no pink on the FP1 bridge at all. And then the FP3, which can have varying degrees of pink, thicker, um, thicker bridges in general. Okay, these are these are thicker than these. This feels more like nature. This does not. But you will get used to this if that's the case. So, anyways, uh, Dr. Ramsey, me and Please leave your comments, and I'll try to get to all of them. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.